In our last video for 6.1, we're going to see that approximate normal distribution um, in action. So the first thing we're going to do is remind us of what we did in part 5. So if we read through here, we can see that the Associated Press reported that 71% of Americans 25 and older are overweight. The researcher wants to know whether the proportion of such individuals in his state are overweight differs from the national proportion. A random sample of 600 adults in his state results in 405 who are classified overweight. So we've been given three things here. One is the 71%. While this is not a true value, it's a reported value by the Associated Press, uh, they do tell us later to see if this differs from the national proportion. So we're going to assume that this is the real deal population proportion based on how this question is written. I'll try to be more explicit in uh, actual examples for a test. Um, this always brings up a really good point. I think Emiliano in my third class, he asked the other day when we were doing this, how is it that you would actually have this number? And the answer is that you usually would not. And that's what we're going to be doing in 6.2 and 6.3 as we move through the rest of the course, is how do we figure out what that proportion is if we don't know it. But for now, we're in real world, uh, in real math land, where we have these sort of unlikely to have proportions. Uh, and then we were also given a random sample. So we know this is our n, our sample size. And we have the number of successes in this particular sample. So in this case, we have an n, or not an n, an x of 405. So our first question here says, let's use the normal approximation to the binomial to find the probability that at most 405 of the 600 are classified overweight. So if we're going to use the normal approximation, what did I do? If we're going to use the normal approximation to the binomial, uh, we probably want to go to our formula sheet if we don't have it, if we have it handy, and remind ourselves that for the binomial, the normal uh, approximation has a mean of NP and a standard deviation of the square root of NPQ. So I would go ahead and put down here. First thing I do is NP. That's my mean, which is my 600 times that 0.71. So we'd expect about 71% of the 600 to uh, be classified as overweight if they're similar to the national average, right? So we figure out that that's 426 is what we would expect. We can also find our standard deviation, the square root of NPQ which is 600 times that 0.71. Q is still our probability of failure or the proportion of not successes here, so 0.29. So again, I'll bring this up and we'll do the square root, 600 times 0.71 times 0.29, 11.1149. And now that we have our mean and our standard deviation, we can go ahead and use a normal distribution to approximate this. We know we should be centered around 426, and we are interested in having at most 405. So we're going to come over to 405, and then at most would tell us that we should be shading to the left. So at the very most, there's 405. So this is what we're looking for. And since we're looking for an area under the normal curve, we're going to use normal CDF just like we did all last tests, which is why I said that normal distribution is super important. Moving forward, uh, our lower bound is our negative crap ton of nines, even though technically there can't be less than zero. Upper bound is 405, and then our mean and our standard deviation. Whoa, a standard deviation. Should be something less than 50%. In fact, we can kind of see we're almost two whole bunny hops away. So we're looking at something probably around 2%. So let's see what we actually get. So come in here, we'll do our normal CDF. Negative crap ton of nines, 405, our mean, and our standard deviation. And I could have used the, the continuity correction here, but like I said, uh, I don't think we need to, especially because we're not going to be able to use it moving forward in the proportions. So this will allow us to actually compare kind of apples to apples. So right around 3%, 0 0.0294.
that's our probability. So there's about a 2.9% chance that we end up in this little section of getting uh, 405 or less people in our sample. So that was a review of what we've done before. Only reason I did it is to show you that what we're doing now is pretty much identical. identical. So we're going to do the exact same problem. We're still going to have a P of 0.71. We still have our N of 600. And we still have our number of successes, our X of 405. But now we're going to do this using the methods for part six, using this for a sample proportion. So the first thing here says describe our distribution of our sample proportion. Now, if you remember, describing the distribution is saying, well, what distribution would I use to find probabilities? Would I be doing work with here? And that means our squiggly line notations. So our sample proportion, our p hat, it follows an approximate normal. And this is where we're going to use our formula sheet again. But now we don't want to talk about binomial because that's for a number of successes. We want to be right here, sampling distribution for a sample proportion. So we're going to use this mean and this standard deviation instead of the mean and standard deviation for the binomial. So we'll be using P and the square root of PQ divided by N. So we can come back here and go, all right, well, I know my mean is equal to P. Well, that's easy enough, 0.71. And my standard deviation is the square root of PQ divided by N which is 0.71, oops, times 0.29, divided by my sample size of 600. So I'll bring this up. Looks like I need another square root. This time I'll do my P times my Q and divide by my N instead, because remember it gets smaller as my N gets larger. So this is, oops, 0.0185. So now we have everything. This sentence is that this is basically a full sentence to any stats person. Our sample proportion follows an approximate normal with a mean of 0.71 and a standard deviation of 0 0.0185. Part B says, what is the proportion of overweight individuals in our sample? So we're being asked for the P hat, right? Proportion in the sample versus the real proportion. Uh, this is that calculation I told you is super simple, but is not going to be given to you. You have to realize that if you want to find the proportion, you're just going to figure out the number of successes out of our total number. So this is our 405 divided by our 600. So if we do that, 405 divided by 600. Oops. No. I'm just going to start over. Bad things are happening. Looks like we get 0.675. So our last question here on this problem is to find the probability that at most 405, so we're looking for a probability, that at most 405 of the 600 sample adults are classified overweight using our distribution for the sample proportion. So if we're going to use this distribution, we know that we have a normal distribution centered at 0.71. And if we're looking for a probability, well, we're looking for an area under the curve. Now we can't use, oops, I meant to change my color there. We can't use this at most 405 as it is because 405 would be way over here, right? Which wouldn't make any sense and at most would be the whole curve. In fact, it's not on the same scale as what we're talking about, so that's why we don't want to use it. We're in proportion land. So 405 is a number. We want a proportion, but we know 405 is the same thing as 67.5% of the people in the sample. So we can use our sample proportion instead. So we know we got 0.675. What's the probability of being out here? So again, we're looking for an area under the normal curve. We're going to use normal CDF. Lower bound is still negative crap ton of nines. Upper bound is 0.675. We have our mean and our standard deviation that we found before. So almost identical to what we've done before with this normal approximation to the binomial. Um, usually, in fact, here we wouldn't have the number given. We would be given the proportion, so it was more obvious where we were headed. But if we did this, second distributions, negative crap ton of nines. We get out 0.675. 
0 0.0293. And now this is barely slightly different than what we got in the previous question. Just to remind us, we got 0 0.0294 versus 0 0.0293. And they should be identical. The only difference is here, uh, we do end up slightly with less significant figures on our standard deviation for a proportion because you only have three sig figs here. Whereas if we're thinking about like chemistry wise, uh, we actually had six sig figs on that standard deviation. So there's always going to be uh, a slight difference. Uh, the number version is actually going to always be more accurate than the proportion version. Um, but that's essentially all you have to do.